This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Here we go! Listening to the Emerald Flow Show on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. Welcome to the 26th episode of the Emerald Flow Show. We're a podcast on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. You can follow us on Twitter at Emerald Flow Show. And if you're so inclined, you can donate to us at voicesofwrestling.com slash donate. I'm Gerard DeTrolio here with Paul Vosh. Paul, how are you doing? Um tired because we're recording it an hour earlier than normally which means it's 6 30 instead of 7 30 and apparently that makes a big difference <laughs> but i uh, remember like a little while back to Rod, when we were talking about or when i mentioned uh kind of what my top uh wrestling theme was i listened to on spotify uh this year yes yeah so i actually found out that actually youtube does something similar as well uh with youtube music so do you want to take a guess what was the top wrestling theme I listened to but on YouTube this time? Um, Nakajima's theme? No, but you are in the right company and uh, not in the right weight division and also not in the right level of wrestlers that I like. Uh, Nosawa's theme? No, close. He's not worse in the ring, but he's also not much better. Uh Hayata. Yes, it is Hayata. <laughs> I, I, but, like, but I don't know, like it seemed kind of flawed the way they did the methodology because I looked at it and it mentioned, like because not far behind were Kavada's and Masawa's theme, but Kobashi's theme wasn't there and I definitely listened to all three, like a lot. So there's definitely some flawed methodology that YouTube is using there. Well, uh, speaking of the world of the internet and the things to do on there, Paul, have you ever noticed how some, shall we say, very hardcore wwe fans on twitter will post like they had their tweet faved on this date by a wwe superstar yes yeah sasha banks noticed me at december 15th 2018 or whatever well paul i was wondering if you think we should add that to our twitter bio on the emerald flow show account because on december 20th uh kento miyahara liked one of our tweets Ooh, didn't Yuma also like like something about Nobuyagi as well. Oh yes, yeah, that's, that's right. So we've had two like in the last week. <laughs> the, the the Kento tweet was I was just saying that like oh the show that's gonna happen in a few hours that we're not gonna be able to get to uh, is like free on AJPW.TV and he liked it. So I guess we have a couple of tweets we can put in our bio now. Yeah, of course. <laughs> just. Put all of them in there. And that's obviously then also the shout out to the Noah people. If you want to show up in our bio, <laughs> just like our tweets. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, but actually, I mean, what we're going to do today as well is we're actually going to be previewing quite a few shows as well. And I thought since 
we kind of come at the end of the year, I, figured, I think it's high time we actually uh, introduce a new kind of feature to the show, uh, show so to say. Um, and it is something that I'm actually very blatantly stealing from my favorite NFL podcast, uh, where they, uh, whenever they preview kind of the NFL games for the week, they have something called the lock of the week. So what that means is they pick one matchup where they are certain uh, that they know which team is going to win, uh, and they essentially lock that up. And then basically at the end of the season, they see who, do, who did the best in that, and th they are the winner of the lock competition. So I am blatantly stealing that, uh, and I'm uh, introducing it here as well. So uh, in this case, uh, when we preview a show, and there's one match where we are certain uh, that we know who's going to win that match, uh, we can lock that up. Uh, it can be from any of the shows that we're previewing, but it can be uh, just one match per show, essentially. Now, there's obviously an additional kind of uh, qualifier to that. Um, so what you need to do uh, in order to actually be able to lock up a match is that you need to be able to lo uh, look yourself in the mirror uh, when you lock up the match. So, for example, not one of the matches that we're previewing, but one of the matches that we're reviewing uh, this week is going to be uh, Satoshi Kojima versus Yasutaka Yano. So, in theory, uh, when we previewed that match, uh, and we would, uh, one of us would have said, oh, I'm locking up Satoshi Kojima beating Yasutaka Yano, then uh, that person would have had to be able to look, themselves in the mir uh, look at themselves in the mirror and say yes, I think this is a this is a fair and fair in the spirit of competition uh, that I'm locking up Kojima here beating Yano. Uh, whereas obviously, if that person had said, "Oh, I'm locking up Yano beating Kojima," that would not be have been an issue. So those are the basic outlines of the competition, and I think we're gonna keep track of it as well. And then at the end of each year, we're going to be kind of look at which of us is the better person at predicting a match. Sounds like a great idea and something that you can follow along, which is why you should listen to every episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. So we'll start real quick with all Japan pro wrestling here. Just some previews. I'm not going to bother with the 21st cause that show will have happened by the time you're listening to this. So, um, so we have the full cards for, uh, the December 25th show, the January 2nd show, and the January 3rd show. Uh, so for uh, Cork and Hall on Christmas Day, um, it's going to be, the match order hasn't been announced, but we got the All Japan Pro Wrestling 50th Anniversary Final. It'll be the final 50th anniversary match of the year. Uh, Eight-man tag match, Kento Miyahara, Atsuki Aoyagi, Taichi, and Yoshinobu Kenamaru, who are now unaffiliated to any unit. Versus Jake Lee, Yuma Aoyagi, Sonata, and Bushi. Um, I would assume uh, Kento's team is winning. Actually, yeah, I, I would. Uh, I would assume that as well. I think Bushi is eating a shutdown German suplex and is getting pinned. A special six-man tag match that will be a lot of fun: Hokuto Omori, uh, Rio Inoue, and Yuma Enzai versus. The Young Lions, Yuto Nakashima, Rai Ohe Oiwa, and Kosei Fujita. Uh, I would assume Hokuto is finally going to pin somebody for, for the first time in a while. Plus, the Young Lions won that other match back in... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that seems likely here as well. And uh, I know that you didn't watch the Gurintai show, so I can tell you that he was actually pretty over on that one. Oh, that's good to hear. Hmm? Um, so we'll see. Uh, although I'm a little... I find a little fishy that he was the one all Japan representative on that show. So I wonder if he's going to be pulled into Nosawa's orbit. I mean, maybe, but I mean, there were like loads of kind of people on that show. So uh, yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't look too far into it. it. I think we can get a better view of it. Like once we actually know what Nosawa is, if Nosawa is doing anything more on all Japan, aside from just the all Asia tag title match. Uh, well, we'll get to that in a moment. So the next is the special six-man tag match. Tajiri, which is also Tajiri's last match in all Japan. Uh, Tajiri, Toru Yano, Black Mens and Black Mensure versus Yuji Nagata, Dan Tamara, and Hikaru Sato. Um, I would assume that Mensure is eating the pin here. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, or to Jerry himself, actually. <laughs> oh, yes, actually, that would be a good point. Special eight-man tag match, uh, Ryuki Honda, Yusuke Kodama, and Masao Hanabata, and Minoru Tanaka versus Taru, Jun Saito, Rei Saito, and Toshizo. I could see, uh, like, Minoru Tanaka getting the fall here to challenge Toshizo for the Gayori TV title later. Um. Yeah, I could definitely see that happen as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm just wondering like if this because it's Tanaka teaming with the rest of GOA. So yeah, I don't like, I don't know if that means that like he's going to join them or if this is just based on his kind of beef with uh, um, with uh, Voodoo Murderers as well. I think it's part of the beef thing. Yeah. So yeah, that didn't make sense. Then he would have that he then would challenge Toshizo afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Do you think he's beating him though? If he does, mm, that would be a good idea actually, because Tanaka with the TV title would be a nice little run. I think. Yeah. So that means he's definitely not winning. <laughs> <laughs> and a special singles match: Rising Hayato versus Kaz Hayashi. I mean, probably Kaz, but Hayato could win, right? I- you know what? I actually feel incredibly confident that Hayato is winning, and I'm oh, actually really? locking that up that Rising Hayato is beating Kaz Hayashi here. Okay, then. We have our first yeah. lock. Yeah, so I think, because I think that this might be like a f- uh, that Kaz is just coming in here to put over Hayato, and then they're uh, basically going to like start building uh, Hayato from here as well. Next up, a special singles match. Yoshitatsu versus Naoya Nomura. Paul, I'm going to do my first lock. <laughs> I'm locking in Naoya Nomura on this one. Oh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, because I think there's still like a reasonable expectation that Yoshitatsu could actually win in theory. But yeah, I think that feels like a decent one as well. And a special singles match, uh, Takao Mori versus Manabu Soya. Get Wild Explodes. Um, I mean, Soya's not announced for anything else, but I assume he's still winning. Um, probably, but then again, Omori is a champion, and so yeah, has been kind of just been a lost post in Noah. So, <clears throat> but uh, like, if he is going to be a regular going for, or if not a regular, but if he's going to be like in all Japan more regularly going forward, then it would make sense for him to win. Yeah, and then we have a sh- our team three hundred and thirty three kilograms, Suji Ishikawa. Chihiro Hashimoto and Yu versus uh, Suwama, Mayumi Ozaki, and Maya Yukihi. I guess I, I don't know, but I think like Suwama or Shuji are pinning like one or the other in this. Um, yeah, I, I think it's definitely very safe to say that Suwama's winning. But then again, I don't know. It feels like a weird Christmas thing to have the heels go over in the main event. Yeah, well, it's not officially the main event, but I feel like it's the match with the most build. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely is the match of the most build. Um, yeah, I guess it kind of depends on the match order. If this is not the main event, then I'm very certain that the heels are winning this. Whereas if this is the main event, I, I could then I think it's more likely the faces win. But I think actually it might be the the final 50th anniversary match that yep. will be the main event. Yeah, I think so In which too. case you'll have like Kento and everyone up there cheering. So yeah, no. And, and if that's the case, then I think Suvama's uh, team is very clearly winning this. Yeah. So we move on to January 2nd at Corrigan Hall, in the, and they've renamed the, the series from New Year Wars back to the old name of New Year Giant Series. Uh, so first off, we have Takao Mori, Rising Hayato, and Kaz Hayashi, now they're teaming, versus Yoshitatsu, Black Menso Ray, and Mitsui and Nagai. Menso Ray loses here. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, Dan Tamara, Rio Inoue, and Yuma Anzai versus Ryuki Honda, Yusuke Kodama, and Masao Hanabata. Paul, what's the outside chance that Anzai pins Hanabata here? I think that really would be kind of a statement of intent of what they're going to do with him this year. Because otherwise, I think it's very clear that they're losing. But just, I think we kind of have to throw out the normal rules for Anzai. So I think there is actually like a, I would say maybe like a 40% chance that that's actually what they're going to do here. Yeah, I think Inoue probably eats the pin, but I think it's not impossible. Yeah, because otherwise, like, 
even like for like Anzai, like I don't think Anzai would get pinned by anyone on the other side. Mm -hmm. And now this one's now called a world tag team title skirmish. So it sounds like this is a number one contenders match. The reunited uh, Nomu Yagi, Yuma Aoyagi and Naoya Nomura versus Jun Saito and Rei Saito. And I have to say, Paul, I'm actually very excited for this match. <laughs> yeah, and, no, this should be really good. And Paul, this is my lock of this show. Oh, okay. Because Nomu Yagi is winning this. Okay. Yeah. No, fair enough. <laughs> That that's a that's a really good pick. Uh, that feels like a safe one as well because I don't think they're gonna make, don't think they're gonna do voodoo murders versus voodoo murders. But you never know. <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing is, this this actually also works if they're winning. Like that works like regardless of which way they're gonna go for the tag team title match. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think this is just even more. I'm hyping myself up again, but mm -hmm. this is a little more evidence in terms of the uh, Nomura is coming home uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, I think there's a very good chance that they're going to end up beating Voodoo Murders for the tag titles. Um, yeah. Because I don't know. I have a bad feeling about a Shino soldier injury now. When, when are they, when do they generally do the introduction with like the track suits and everything? January 2nd. So it was second. Okay. Yeah. They could, in theory, do it after this match. They could, absolutely. We'll see. But it's usually like a... Mm -hmm. They do it as part of like the welcome to the new year thing at the beginning of the yeah. show and everything yeah. like that. Uh, well, I mean, then, if Nomura is coming out in that tracksuit, then like that just becomes like pretty much like 100% guaranteed that they're winning. Yep. And next up, we have Shuji Ishikawa and Hokuto Omori versus Minoru Suzuki and X. And Paul, this ties into the Budokan on January 1st. Uh, there's not much more to say about that show because no more matches have been announced. It's the ones that have already been out there. But mm -hmm. Paul, everyone's now expecting with the dissolution of Suzuki Goon in New Japan that I think Minoru Suzuki is the number one guy to be X on the Budokan show. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, I think that's the most likely one. Unless, so, well, no, uh, Ibushi's contract wouldn't be up before then. So. No, not until the end of January. Yeah, so Suzuki in that case really seems like the most likely person to be that. But Paul, let me ask you this. Is the X in these two All Japan shows a member of Segura Gun? A member of Segura Gun? Yeah, because Minoru Suzuki's teaming with like Kendo Kashi and, and, and Kazuyuki Fujita. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I thought you were meant, I thought you were like alluding to something very specific. No. No, okay. Because, because my brain was like, ah, oh, it's going to be Kojima, but I don't think it's going to be Kojima in this no. case. No. <laughs> I mean, a member of Segura Gun, maybe, but do you have anyone specific in mind then? I don't, but I just have a bad feeling about, well, one of the shooters, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, could be Hideki Suzuki. Yeah. So, I don't but, know. I mean, they do need to find new, fresh challengers for Kento. So, but that, then you'd have to convince Hideki to put over, like, someone like Miyahara. <laughs> I mean, he was willing to do that with Kaito. Yeah. So, we'll so I don't see. like it. Feels like it feels like he's softening a little bit uh, as he gets older. Yeah, as long as it, as long as it's not like Funaki or Fujita, I'll be yes, fine with like Fujita Su would be. Uh... I'll be fine with Sugera himself. I'd be fine with Hideki. I'd be fine. Well, who else is there? Doctor. Well, I don't think it's Wagner. No. Um, <laughs> uh sakuraba even would just be a novelty i think in all japan uh which i wouldn't mind but i don't know um so that's what that if it's a former Segura gun member uh, what if it's a former uh suzuki gun member that's possible i mean well taichi was talking about like because in the saka taichi mania mm -hmm. thing uh main event He's like, he says, talking about like how he's going to be lonely in 2023. And I think he told Mio Abe to stop being his uh, valet and stuff like that. No. So, uh, so I don't know, maybe Tai Chi is because I feel like Tai Chi is like on the cusp of getting heavily downcycled in New Japan. Yeah. So no, I think without, without Suzuki Gun and it seems like they're moving Saber and more of a singles direction. So. Tai Chi, there's, there's a risk that he's getting lo lost in the shuffle, so I think it might be time for him to like, look elsewhere as well. I don't think he's going to leave, but he's going to go like pop up other places. 
Yeah, 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 definitely. Like, I don't think he's gonna he's done done with New Japan, but I think he's just gonna want to work like a bit elsewhere as well. Yeah, and then uh, for the PWF World Junior Heavyweight Title, uh, we have uh, Atsuki Aoyagi versus Hukaru Sato, which should be a great match. And this one's my lock for this show. Okay, because so wait, so you have like three oh, for this show? No, sorry, what I meant is you have one per like recording essentially. So oh, that's what okay. I meant. Sorry. <laughs> okay. My confusion. Well, yeah. uh, I'll go with uh, the Aoyagi's, or sorry, uh, mm-hmm. Nomu Yagi versus the Saito's okay. then. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I assume Aoyagi's winning because it's just the classic trade, the wins back and forth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I I feel like if they really want to like continue this Aoyagi reign, like it has been really good. It has been building him really well. So I don't, like, I don't think it would be a good idea to like cut him off and like, put Sato back in there. So I think just have him carry it a bit longer if it's the right call here. Uh, yeah, but it should be a great match because yeah. their match in the, the tournament was really good. And if they can get a few more minutes, it should be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And then in the main event, or no, uh, two more matches actually, Suwama and Kono defend the world tag team titles against Kento Miyahara and Takuya Nomura. Uh, I think that Suwama and Kono retain and it's building to like, to add heat between Mihar and Nomura in their triple crime match the next day. Yeah, I think that's the most likely outcome here where there's some sort of miscommunication between them and they lose the match. I think Suwama's also challenging Mihar again for the triple crown soon. <sighs> sure. Because he, isn't winning. He, he pinned Kento in the real world tag league and I would yeah. assume that Kento takes the fall here. And then, like, Suwama challenges at, like, Korokin at the end of January or in February or something. Yeah, I, I could easily see that happen. Like I said, as long as he's not winning, then yeah. fine. But, yeah. And then, finally, we have the New Year Battle Royal with featuring Masanobu Fuchi. Who's obviously the favorite to win. Uh, definitely. Uh, and then next up on the 3rd of January, we've got Black Mensa Ray, Mitsuya Nagai versus Yusuke Kodama and Masao Hanabata. Hopefully... The uh, GOA team wins this one. Um, they should. Yeah. Then next up, we have Suwama, Jun Saito, and Rei Saito versus Yoshitatsu, Yuji Nagata, and Yuma Anzai. Um, I would. <laughs> it'd be funny to see Yoshitatsu get pinned in this before Anzai does, which I think is a real possibility. I think that is a very real possibility. Yeah. I mean, it could still be Suwama like getting his win back over Anzai from the Real World Tag League, but. I could also very easily see Yoshitatsu taking the pin here as well. Yep. And then next up, I think this is going to be a real banger. The sleeper match of the two next the two days, Ryuki Honda versus Naoya Nomura. Like, they, I don't know if they've ever really tussled because obviously Honda came in mm-hmm. after um, Nomura, well, he was injured. Yeah, I don't think they've ever come across each other at all. So I'm struggling to think when that would even happen. Like, a, like Nomura never like went to like Wrestle One or anything like that. No. So like, there never really would have been an opportunity for them to actually have a face off in a match. So I'm just, well, no, the oh, da, 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 no, no, yeah, no. The only Honda he's ever, the only Hondas he's ever faced are Taman Honda and Ayumu Honda. So. Uh. No. Well, that's cool because I like Timon Honda a lot. Uh, so, <laughs> but that was also in 2014. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was Masao Inoue, Timon Honda, and Tsuyoshi Kikuchi defeat Noya Nomura, Osamu Nishimura, and Yuji Hijikata. So, <laughs> very. That was Wada's 40th anniversary, that's and funny. the 60th anniversary. Yeah. So, that was a very different promotion. Like the main event of that one was Go Shiozaki and Suwama defeat Akebono and Takao Omori. <laughs> oh, wow. And then we have a junior special six man tag match Eski Oyagi, Hokuto Omori, and Razing Hayato versus Dan Tamara, Ryo Inoue, and Hikaru Sato. Um, I would assume that Inoue um, just does eats the pin here, unless they're continuing the Omori stuff. Um, yeah, like I said, for the all Asia tag titles, like it's best to just go and just flip a coin and have it just based, decide based on that. So, let's see. And next up, we have Shuji. So, Shik- wait, sorry. Uh, I'm predicting that, yeah, that 
uh, Omori and Inoue are going to defend it. At least that's what the coin tells me. Okay. And then next up, Shuji Ishikawa and Yuma Aoyagi versus Minoru Suzuki and X. And Paul, this is why I'm a little concerned about depending on who it is from Sugura Gun, because I could see, like, imagine Masakatsu Funaki just choking out Yuma Aoyagi or something. I would be so pissed. <laughs> oh, how about it's just, uh, it's uh, Fujita just uh, doing the cradle pin on Aoyagi. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, really, I mean, I think Shuji should eat the pin here if it, if X is like someone that they're trying to heat up. I don't yeah. know. And then for the All Asia Tag Team Championship, Takawa Mori and Masao Inoue versus Nosawa Rongai and Kendo Kashin. Hopefully, this is just a token defense, and you know Nosawa gets his like last match in All Japan or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, I think I kind of because it's early, kind of got confused which match we were talking about earlier. So it's this one where I was talking about. You need to flip a coin to figure it out. Yep, and you said Inoue and Omori are winning. Yeah. And then finally, the for the Triple Crown, Kento Miyahara uh, versus Takuya Nomura. Uh, obviously, I'm pretty sure Kento's winning, and I am expecting an incredible match. And uh, I think they'll play off each other very well because they've established their very bizarre relationship these past couple of months. And I think we'll get a sense if, because like Kento was hinting at that Nomura would be in All Japan more in 2023, and I think we'll get a sense of that after this match. Yeah, I really hope he's going to be more in all Japan going forward because it's not like he's doing anything in big Japan. Well, he's got the tag team, but he definitely feels like he's been cycled out of the single yeah. scene in big Japan. Yeah, yeah. So I, if I'm all Japan and I can get more dates on him, then I would absolutely do that. So I hope that means he's going to be in the Champion Carnival and everything going forward as well. So Because I think he, he's just a very good addition to the roster. Absolutely. And Paul, before we move on, any thoughts on Suwama's comments in Tokyo Sports? <laughs> Him shooting on Tajiri? Pew pew. Yeah, so maybe for the people that didn't read those comments yet, it's basically Suwama said that Tajiri brainwashed Jake Lee into leaving the promotion, which is an interesting stance, but I guess I kind of get where he's coming from, although I still think it's just more likely that Jake saw the writing on the wall and was just like, yeah, I'm getting out of here rather than Tajiri just actively. Like, was Tajiri probably telling him after he fell out of power that Jake should think about leaving? I probably think so, but I think Jake is also smart enough to like know that without Tajiri telling him that he's not going to get as pushed as hard without Tajiri there. I agree. And they probably saw his title run as disappointing yeah um like if i'm jake then i'm starting f starting to think about leaving like right after savama like the previous time savama was shooting on someone was after savama basically told him to like i'll show you how, what a real heel looks like <laughs> when he reformed voodoo murderers which again was also kind of like basically just like a mix of like a work and a shoot because it very much felt like he was disappointed with the way uh total eclipse went yeah. And also he said that he felt that Tajiri had also brainwashed Francesco Akira to jump to New Japan. <laughs> I mean, but like if this, if that were true, then wouldn't Tajiri go to New Japan? Like it doesn't make sense for him to basically be like, oh, yeah, you should lose for you, not you. You need to leave for New Japan with like no obvious direct gain for Tajiri well, himself. I mean, I mean, the person that got Akira into New Japan is Will Ospreay. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the other thing. Like, it's very clearly that Will was the guy that actively scouted Akira. So, like, was to, like if Akira came to Tajiri and asked him, it's like, hey, should I go and take New Japan's offer? Tajiri probably goes, yes, just based on the money that New Japan is willing to offer. But it's yeah. not like Tajiri picked up the phone and, like, called people to get him into New Japan. Like, that was very obviously Will Ospreay basically telling the New Japan office, I want this guy. Yeah, exactly. And, like, I mean, it's Tokyo Sports, and Suwama was still sort of in character, but it's him, like, to me, this is him venting his frustrations, but also sort of working an angle at the same time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, 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 obviously, but 
We'll, we'll see. And then Tajiri just plugging his book in return. <laughs> well, he says he's going to have to write another book to explain all this, right? So he's, 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 he's got plenty of material for yet another book. So is that one going to be like 25 pages and like $30 now? I don't know. Uh, maybe. But honestly, I would, if that gets translated, I would pay the, the 30 bucks for 25 <laughs> pages to read what, it, you know, his version of events backstage yeah. in all Japan it, that would it be might at least, interesting. yeah, for sure. And so that is all Japan Pro Wrestling. And before we move on to Pro Wrestling, Noah, just a word from our sponsor this week, HelloFresh. So what is HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonable recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. It's the most festive time in the year, and HelloFresh is here to help you make the most out of every moment. From holiday hosting to dinners during busy weekends, you can count on HelloFresh to deliver fresh ingredients and seasonal recipes. Tis the season for saving money wherever we can. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout, so you can use the savings for holiday gifts or even treat yourself. And, uh, Paul, I know during this time, it is definitely, like, unless I'm actually planning the big Christmas dinner, I don't really have a lot of time to just sit down and make other dinners during the week because, you know, getting all, like, last-minute Christmas things in the in a row we got to do your shopping and everything like that so quick and easy meals are definitely good leading up to the big christmas dinner yes absolutely absolutely it's uh when i'm basically when i'm home for christmas as well like i'm just gonna eat like the big christmas dinners and everything there but then obviously like afterwards i'm gonna go back home and it's cold outside and all of that so i don't also don't really want to go outside and go shopping so just having everything delivered to my door is also going to be like a big advantage as well. So you can go to hellofresh.com slash VOW18 and use code VOW18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. That's hellofresh.com slash VOW18 and use code VOW18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. And now we move on to a number of pro wrestling Noah shows, and I guess a Tokyo Gurintai show. <laughs> so we start off with Noah New Hope on uh, December 18th at Shinkiba First Ring in front of 205 fans. And to start off the show, we had Atsushi Katoge versus Shoki Kitamura from Zero One. They went to a time limit draw in 15 minutes. I mean, I thought it was okay, but I thought like they were acting like it was. For the first couple of minutes, they're acting like they're going to go to a 30-minute draw, not a 15-minute draw. So, I don't know. It just was a little underwhelming because I do like both guys. Um, yeah, uh, same. It was, it, was a really fun, it was a really fun match, but it also... F- I mean, I actually kind of like that they tried to insert some uh, kind of urgency into it, like especially both people, both men being frustrated at the end of the match. Um, but, yeah... Otherwise, it was a, it was a fine match, probably one of the better ones on the show, but yeah. Otherwise, it was just okay. Uh, and then we had Masa Kitamiya and Daiki Inaba defeated Yoshiki Inamura and Taishi Ozawa in 18 minutes and 54 seconds. It's the longest match of Ozawa's career up to this point, with the camel clutch from Inaba on Ozawa. I thought this was a good little match, and I thought Ozawa is progressing along nicely. Yeah, also like. He also took some punishment from Inaba and Kitamiya as well. Like, yep. They were just beating the shit out of him. And yeah, he is coming along nicely. So I'm really looking forward to kind of what their plans are going to be with him. Uh, and I mean, but with him, I think that he is going to go through like a lot more of a classical kind of young boy like schedule than someone like uh, Anzai is. Yeah. But. I think definitely like he is also still pretty young. So I think for him, like there is like time and everything to build him. But just based on what we've seen so far, I think he has the potential to be like a really nice piece for Noah in a couple of years. Yep. And then, so we move on to uh, Naomichi Murafuji defeated Kai Fujimura in 13 minutes and 26 seconds with the Shin Tiger King. Paul, 
I thought this was a really solid match. I think mm -hmm. Fujiwara looked good. This was obviously not Mara Fuji working at his hardest, but I would say that he's still pretty good at beating up uh, young wrestlers. Um, yeah, this was a decent match. Nothing special, um, but I yeah I thought that uh, that uh, that everyone tried hard here, but. I don't know. It's really kind of hard to remember the show. Like I kind of remember the main event, but every fun, everything yeah. else is a bit of a blur. I'm not going to lie. And then next up, we had Jack Morris and Dante Leon defeating Kaito Kiyomiya and Amaska in 19 minutes and 31 seconds with the Inferno from Leon on Ama Amaska. Uh, Paul, I thought this was actually pretty good when, as long as when Leon wasn't in there. Because obviously Morris and Kiyomiya have great chemistry and uh amaxka is a, just a great wrestler yeah uh this this was pretty fun as well one thing and what wanted to notice so like th was this a cheering show it was right yes paul it was yeah because i didn't really get that feeling to be quite honest so yeah um these even in the cork and hall show i don't know these no crowds don't want to like think just compared to i mean something people got heat i mean they kaido did manage to get some heat but this the crowd is just a uh i don't know a, a shadow of what yeah. the all japan shinkiba crowds have been in terms of making noise yeah I, I mean yeah that's the thing as well yeah kaido managed to get some heat but i just compare that to like the reaction that someone like kento miyahara or even like yuma Aoyagi gets in the right. same venue and it's just like i don't know like nova wasn't really known for its super hot crowds pre-pandemic but I don't think it's a good sign that nothing seems to have really changed because they no. had a they had a massive ownership change. They had a massive new investments going into it, and I don't know. The crowds still don't seem as engaged as they do for other promotions, which is worrying. Yeah, so we'll see what's going forward. Once you know, maybe give it a few more crowd cheering shows, and they'll liven up. But it's something I think to definitely watch. Yeah. And then in the main event of the show, Satoshi Kojima defeated Yasutaku Yano in 12 minutes and 46 seconds with the Western Lariat. Paul, I was getting your idea that you like this match a lot. I thought it was just okay. I thought putting in the main event, I would have even given Yano even more than he got here. But I mean, it was still a decent little match. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was like a great match or anything, but I think it was definitely more memorable than anything else on this show. Uh, I thought Yano did played like the underdog really well here, which is what he should have done. Like, I think, yeah, I get giving Yano a bit more, but I think in this case, the size difference is just simply too much. Like, right. Kojima is just so much bigger than Yano. So I think just making the story here that Kojima just like dominates Yano is the right story to go. And I think in this case, it is actually like giving, like you don't really give Yano offense. I think the way you kind of help him in this case is just have him like, last a while with Kojima in there because they easily could have made this like a sub 10 minute match as well and they gave yeah. them 12 minutes and everything so I and also putting this in the main event helped Yano as well so I thought the match structure made sense to me and uh, I thought that like it it was just a very logical match uh, and that's why I liked it as well and also like watching Kojima as well is always a treat now Paul, what did, what did you think, though? They, do you think they could have flipped this in the previous match and had, like, the tag match as the main event? Uh, yeah, because I generally also think that putting the champion in the main event makes a lot of sense. Although, obviously, yeah. it is weird that the champion in this case was on the losing side as well. Or yes, the sure. heavyweight champion was on the losing side. The junior champion won. But the fact that the heavyweight champion was on the losing side there is, I don't know, it's, it's a weird choice. Yeah. And then we go on to the second show of the doubleheader on the 18th, uh, the Congo Produce Diamond 5 show in front of 288 fans, and that was a super va no vacancy full house. In the opening match, uh, Hiroki defeated Alejandro in 13 minutes and 8 seconds with the Michinoku Driver 1. Solid match. Good opener. Uh, I think Alejandro is, is doing really great work right now, and Hiroki is, you know, serviceable. But I thought it was fine enough for an opener. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really hope, well, I would love if they would do something with Alejandro as well, but it seems like that's not 
going to be forthcoming for a little bit longer. Uh, next up, we had Manabu Soy and Shuji Kondo defeating Daiki and Nabin Seki Yoshioka in 16 minutes and 30 seconds when Soya used the Dando on Inaba. I like this. I thought this was pretty good tag uh, action, actually. Uh, the teams gelled well, obviously, because they're all Wrestle 1 alumni. But uh, yeah, like really good, I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was really like a nice throwback to like the Wrestle 1 days. So it just kind of made me sad a little bit as well that that promotion is dead, just seeing these four guys in the same ring again. But no, they obviously have like very good chemistry in the throat. Okay, sigh. Masakatsu <laughs> Funaki defeated Yoshiki Inamura in nine minutes and 40 seconds with a running knee lift. I thought it was sort of cool to see Inamura on the mat. There were some cool spots, and Funaki, to his credit, took some big hits and suplexes from Inamura. But come on, man. What are we doing here? Yeah, I mean, this was yet another Funaki match. And like I said, I'm not surprised. To be honest, if he had done locks like last time, I would have locked this up. I would have been pretty much guaranteed that like Funaki was going to win this. Um, yeah, I don't know if we can... like. I think we've said a lot about this kind of stuff, like both Funaki like winning matches and then in a more losing matches, and this was just yet another example of both of those things. Uh, yeah. Uh, next up, we had Katsuhiko Nakajima versus Satoshi Kojima. Time limit draw, thirty minutes. I really dug this. This is a lot of fun. Going back to mid two thousands, all Japan, um, and uh, yeah, I mean these are just. I just really liked. This. I thought this was the best match on the show. It, didn't feel like it dragged too, too long. You know, it was a little meandering at the beginning, but they were just kicking the crap out of each other. Yeah, no, this was a ton of fun. I agree. Uh, I also didn't feel that it dragged too much. Um, there were some parts in the middle where I was like, mm, okay, they seem to be going pretty long, but I think they kind of made up for that with like a really nice closing, closing stretch as well. Uh, yeah, I thought this was definitely the... Best match, best match on this show easily. I don't think it's the best match or, uh, from Noah that I've seen uh, out of all of these uh, shows we're going to cover today, but it was still really, really good. And uh, it was maybe hurt a little bit for me that I actually watched a different Kojima match just before it as well, and it wasn't as nearly as good as this one. And I'm not talking about the match, match against Yano. I'm talking about the match I watched from my Secret Santa, which... I guess at this point it might actually be up by the time you're listening to this. So I'm just going to say which match it is. It, is, it was Kojima versus Tenru from 2002. Which, ah, yes. That is an absolute fucking excellent, easy five-star match. And is it the July one? It, yeah, it's the Triple Crown match. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that one is just an absolute tremendous performance from both men. So uh, and this wasn't that, so... It, but it's also unfair to compare this match to that match. So I will just say that. But it was still a really good <laughs> match regardless. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, semi-main event, uh, Amaxka defeated Tadasuke in 11 minutes and 6 seconds with the overload. I like the match. I just feel like they could have gotten more out of this because this is the big feud, right? Like yeah. Tadasuke banished How out of the company for uh, several months. And they just sort of concluded it on a Shinkiba show. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird that like the hardest match they had against each other was the first match where they also went to a draw. Like the match that actually started this whole feud at the beginning of this year at the at the at the Noah the New Year show. Like that was the best match they had against each other, and then like every like consecutive match after that was just not as good. I think the loser leaves town match was like the second best match probably that they had, and then this one was I don't know like. I didn't really feel like it had the same heat as like all of the other matches. So no, I I don't know. I mean, it was I thought it was good, serviceable, yeah. nice little junior match, but it just didn't I don't know fit the feud. Yeah, exactly. Like the, especially since this is presumably the last match of the feud as well. Yeah, and then the main event, uh, Keno defeated uh, Hajime Ohara in eleven minutes and thirty nine seconds with the PFS. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's just Keno getting a win over Ohara. <laughs> Where the fuck was this I, the main event? I, yeah, I don't get it. Well, I mean, putting Keno in the main event, fine, but just against O'Hara, that was an obvious result or something. I don't know. Just whatever. Yeah, you don't have to uh, go out and watch it. No, I almost thought it was like like putting Funaki versus Inamura in the main event makes more sense. 
<laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, I get why they so. didn't put Nakajima Kojima there, because that went to a draw, and ending a show on a draw is kind of like, I don't know, that doesn't feel great either. Right. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, this is, just makes absolutely no fuck. Like, oh, like fucking Amakusa versus Tadasuke makes more sense in the main event. Like, there's so many matches here that make more sense as the main event than this one. Yeah, definitely. So well, then we move on to December 19th at uh, Cork and Hall uh, for 551 fans, which is, you know, in the uh, general range of what Noah's been doing. But mm-hmm. this one had cheering for once. Noah finally realized that they were not getting more than <laughs> 700 fans in there. So unless they have Dragon Gate with them. Uh, so they decided that let, let's just do a, a, a cheering show. And then so to open the show, uh, Muhammad Yone and Akatoshi Saito uh, defeated Shuhei Taniguchi and Taishi Ozawa in 11 minutes and 7 seconds when Yone def- used the muscle buster on Ozawa. I mean, it's, as we said many times, a Funky Express match. Mm-hmm. But at least this one was against Taniguchi, who is still a lot of fun and obviously getting Ozawa on the show mm-hmm. and some experience with some veterans. Yeah, it's also like this is yet another match where like Tozawa took some lumps as well because Saito and Yon also kind of laid into him quite hard. So yeah, no, but this is like the perfect fi- like this is like the perfect position to like put the Funky Express in. Yeah, and then uh, Eita defeated Hajime Ohara in four minutes and twenty four seconds with the Imperial Uno. I mean, there's not much to say about it. It was perfectly good for what it was. Uh, to the win but i think it was just sort of to set up the subsequent angle yeah pretty much like this match essentially like deleted itself from my brain like right after it happened yeah uh yoshinari ogawa and yasutaku yano went to a no contest against tadasuke and hiroki in 10 minutes and seven seconds when uh eta interfered but paul do you know who came out to make the shit the save <laughs> it's none other than the Sava wrong guy he came up chased off Ada and shook hands with Yoshinari Ogawa, which got a pop from the crowd. And also he revealed that he was wearing a Stinger t-shirt as well. So right. I guess Nosawa is now a member of Stinger. He may be a member of Stinger, but this seems to be him just, uh, I don't know, making his apologies and writing some wrongs on his road to retirement. I guess, yeah. Or this just leads to like, you know, there's dissension within Stinger angle number 654. And then Nosawa turns on Ogawa in the retirement match or something. Yeah, something like that. Or Hayata turns on Ogawa finally. Or, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then next up, we had Yohei defeating Seki Yoshioka in 13 minutes and 11 seconds with a drop kick. I like this a lot. Uh, we are a pro Yohei podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also a pro Seki Yoshioka podcast. And this was just two of the best juniors in the company doing their thing. I mean, they didn't go like balls out or anything, but it was just really great solid junior heavyweight action yeah exactly like i really enjoyed this as well um i obviously as a big seki yoshioka mark i also would have loved him to see this match but i'm also perfectly fine with yohei winning this as well and yeah it just really nice match just kind of sit down and enjoy so it maybe not something like if you don't have any time to like really go out of your way to like look for it but uh, if you have some time i think this match is definitely like worth uh, watching and uh, next up, we had uh, Takashi Sugera, Kazuyuki Fujita, and Hideki Suzuki defeated Masa Kitamiya, Daiki Inaba, and Yoshiki Inamura in 17 minutes and 11 seconds when Suzuki used a double wrist lock on Inamura <laughs> when Daiki Inaba's right there. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually did enjoy this match, but the ending just, you know, I know we've said it a million yeah. times, but it doesn't get any better. No, and, and but did you see before the match where Fujita was handing out... Like, I don't know what that was. Was it, like, a health drink or a beer? Or, like, I'm not sure. Like, he handed out something to, the, like, the crowd and, like, his teammates and the ref. And then he drank it before the match. Could be some sponsors thing. Could could be know. some sponsors thing, yeah. But, like, that's why I was wondering, like, if it was alcohol or something like that. Because he didn't give, give it to Segura. And I'm not sure if Segura is, like, drinking or not. Yeah. And uh, next up... We had Jack Morris defeated Katsuhiko Nakajima in 14 minutes and 55 seconds with the Tiger Driver. I don't think this is quite as good as their match in the N1, but I really do like the chemistry that these two have. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is maybe a little more evidence that Jack is going to get a 
GHC title shot sometime in the new year. I, I mean, at this point, he has to get one because otherwise, like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. Like, he just constantly keeps getting wins. Like, he's also caught, like, and if he's not the one, like, in a tag match that is getting the pin, then he's at least on the winning side. But he also very often gets the pin. So, at this point, like, he has to be getting, like, a title shot at, at a Corican sometime in January because, like, what are, what are we, what are they building him up to do otherwise? Do you think that, do you think it's going to be a Corican Hall? I would say that's the most likely one way. Or do you put it on... Um, oh, right, yeah, because they don't really do title matches at Corican. Well, they did, but <laughs> didn't draw. Yeah. And it was, again, I feel like Jack Morris is more over than uh, Timothy Thatcher also. Yeah, yeah, I feel that as well. But, uh, like, I don't know, like, do you stick it on an undercard on one of these uh, Mudo, Mudo or Muda shows, which is obviously going to be the yeah. main event? You could you could do that as well easily, yeah. And then Although just... I don't know, like even if it's even if like the Yokohama Arena main event is that like Sting, Darby Allen, and Muda match, wouldn't you still give a GHC title match to a bigger name than Jack Morris? Like yeah. I don't know, like a. I mean, unless maybe. even unless a, they want no. to build him up, and it's actually going to be a national title match against uh, Wagner. Oh, that's a very good point too. That could also be where this is all headed. Uh, so I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see. But I think something's coming of Jack Morris yes. early yes. Uh, next year. Um, and then we had Keno Manabusoya Shuji Kondo defeating Kaito Kiyomiya, Masato Tanaka, and Atsushi Katoke in 20 minutes and 4 seconds with a referee stop. Keno uh, defeated Kiyomiya with the sleeper hold. They've been trading wins back and forth in tag matches. This is where my Wrestle Universe... I started to shit the bed on me for a, a while, <laughs> but I saw most of this, and what I saw was really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this was, we've been talking about it constantly, how good No, is at these six-man tag matches, and so this was yet another one of those, and especially if you just have, like, Congo in there, who just have, like, like, everyone's, like, so experienced in teaming with each other in Congo, so and it really kind of shows when they have matches like this. And then next up, uh, Amaska and Ninja Mac defeated Dante Leon and Alejandro in 10 minutes and 39 seconds With uh, when Amaska pinned Leon. Uh, well, I would say it's probably good that they only lasted 10 minutes and 39 seconds. I didn't think this was bad. There was actually some decent stuff in here when it was like Amaska and like Alejandro and stuff and Ninja Mac. But Leon looked a little shaky in some spots, I thought. And just, I don't know. <laughs> they got to put the junior title on a, a match yeah, I think it's, yeah. his time is now. Yeah, I think it's time to just end this title reign. It's, <laughs> it's only been like, what, like a month or two, maybe? But I feel, it already feels like it's long in the tooth. So yeah. it's, time, it's time to end it uh, and just put it on a guy that can like actually like do something and actually have like entertaining matches. So I feel like... That just, especially since you just like brought him back on like a big spot. You had him win the feud with Tadasuke. So I feel it feels like the right choice to make a title change at the Buddha control, which I presume they're going to do that match there. Uh, yes, but it hasn't been announced. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. And in the main event, Naomichi Marafuji defeated Satoshi Kojima in 17 minutes and 13 seconds with a modified cradle, which was like a jackknife hold, although yeah, well, it looked like Marafuji got his legs in the rope, so was it even really legal? And Well, but the <laughs> thing is, the, it, the free count happened before. Like they, It feels like they fucked up the finish here because Marafuji yeah. didn't get his legs into the ropes until after the free count already happened. Yeah. So I don't know. Or were they just out of position and that's why Marfuji's legs ended up in the rope? I don't know. Yeah, it, feel, uh, ve it felt very odd. Like there's some, definitely something went wrong here. I like the match though up until that point though. It's, it's pretty good. It was fine. Not, yeah. blow, not blow away or anything like that. I don't, I mean like I still enjoy Marafuji these days. I know that not everyone does, but like even last year I loved his match against Nakajima for the GHC title and everything like that. And he can still turn it on when he wants to. Yeah, definitely. I'm not saying he was he was doing that here, but I, I did enjoy the match <laughs> for what it was. Yeah, uh, like because I was about to say, I agree that he can definitely turn it on when he needs to, but I don't think he did that here. So I thought, I don't know, I was a little bit bored, and then they kind of fucked up the finish. So like I, I didn't really. The like finish this match. did not help. No, the yeah. finish really kind of took me out of it. Where I was like, what the fuck were they? 
like I kind of get what they were trying to do here, but I'm not sure why they like how they managed to like screw it up this badly as well. Yeah, and so Paul, I didn't get to watch this show, so I will let you mm -hmm. take it away on the Tokyo Gurantai show. Oh, great! <laughs> I mean, there's not really a whole lot to talk about as well because I don't think this was a very good show. <laughs> uh, so this was another Kurokin Hall show. So this one had 750 and Super No Vacancy, and it was also technically a cheering show, but you wouldn't really like you wouldn't really know that from like a good chunk of the like first half of the show essentially because the crowd really made no noise. So the first match was a called a vaccine fight offer match, which I have no fucking idea why it was called that. Uh, I don't know if that was like I don't know if like maybe like one side are like people that are known to be anti-vaxxers and the other side are like people that are vaccinated. That's my best guess. I have no idea if that's the case, to be honest. Like I'm, I'm not making like any predictions who's the anti-vax side if there is an anti-vax side, but like yeah, I, I have no clue why this was called this way, but it's. Uh, Hidetaka, Monma, Daisuke Nakamura, Tyson Maiguchi, and Takuya Kai defeat Ikuto Hidaka, Sushi, Sushi 2, uh, Takatoshi, uh, and Takatoshi Matsumoto in 11 minutes and 50, uh, when Monma pinned Sushi 2 with a modified butterfly hold. Uh, this, this was just, I don't know, this was shit. I didn't like this match at all. <laughs> it was just really boring. Like, it was 11 minutes 50, but it felt like 20 minutes. And, yeah, it, it was just not a great match at all. Then, uh, in the second match, Maya Yuhiki and Miyuki Takasa defeat uh, Rina Yamashita and Natsu Sumire. Uh, when, uh, oh, actually, forgot to write down what the actual finish was. Um, it was uh, Yukihi uh, pinned uh, Sumire. Yeah, yeah. No, that that it is, but, like, it didn't met, met, men, ah, mention what the finish was. Uh, or what the actual move was. So, and I kind of forgot about it as well. Um, it was a really good, it was actually one of the best matches on the show, I want to say. Um, and I just, I, I liked this match, but the crowd didn't. Like the crowd kind of mm -hmm. made no noise at all and was just kind of sad because I think all four I women tried really hard, but it just got like no reaction. I don't think this was a Joshi crowd. No, this definitely was not a Joshi crowd. I don't even feel like this was even much of a Tokyo Gurantai crowd. This almost felt like more of a lower crowd. Like, it was a very odd crowd, but I, I get it into more, like, late why later. Um, yeah, so it was kind of disappointing to, like, see them get in a reaction, and it did kind of hurt my enjoyment of the match, but I still thought it was, like, the, probably the best match on the show as well. So then the third match, uh, which was labeled as No Hai Salida, which I don't speak Spanish, so I probably butchered that really badly. Uh, Eita defeats Kotaro Suzuki with the Imperial Uno in eight minutes, uh, nine minutes, 48. Yeah, I, this was just, I don't know, like I, this was just kind of boring, to be honest. Like, I, I think I'm kind of like, I think I'm giving up now on Eita and like, on this current iteration of Ata outside of Dragon Gate. Like, I think I'm just kind of done expecting more than I should out of his matches because they're just not very good. Like, he just wants to, like, do this kind of weird, like, lucha, like, indie scummer style, and it's just, I don't know, I just really don't like it. And I'm just not going to pretend anymore that he's not going to do that, so I would rather that he just fuck off to Mexico already. Uh, because I think that's clearly what he wants to do at this point, and I probably would actually enjoy what he's doing right now a lot more if he was doing it in Mexico, because I just don't think it works when he does it in Japan. So, yeah, this was just nothing. Also jobbing Suzuki on his way out of the territory. Yeah, that too. I mean, that's the other weird part of this, because technically, obviously, this was a Tokyo Gurantai, like a no joint Noah Tokyo Gurantai show, but you wouldn't really, like, notice that just based on, like, the entire setup, because, like, that's the same problem I actually had with the Congo show, where I think it actually would have helped that they had a different canvas, but yep. they just had the normal Noah canvas, and, I don't know, it just really makes it feel like a Noah show. And, and th this is not a real Tokyo Gurantai show, because there's uh, no Mil Mascaras on this show. Yeah, that too. Mil Mascaras is missing, so it's not an actual Tokyo Gurantai show. So, I don't know. It just feels really weird. So, because then, because then they pretend it's a Tokyo Gurantai show, because then the next match was labeled as the Noah Offer match. 
<laughs> uh, which was Ninja Mac defeats The Leaf Mask and Dante Leon were in 9 minutes 45 with a ninja bomb on the Leaf Mask. Um, I'm fairly certain Leaf Mask was just Alejandro. So, oh, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> who came out to a metal remix of the uh, Neo Genesis Evangelion theme. <laughs> so, I... I feel like there's some sort of reference that I'm missing here. <laughs> That's really what this feels like. Perhaps, yeah. So, otherwise, I enjoyed this match and this when whenever it was like Mac versus Leaf Mask. So that was I thought that was really enjoyable. And Ninja Mac also finally got the crowd going because the previous three matches just like like I actually wrote to Gerard when I was watching this. Whether or not this crowd is actually sedated because they just made no noise at all in the previous three matches. And then finally, but Mac also didn't get them into it until like the end of the match as well, when he finally like just was just like doing all of his crazy stuff. And that finally got the crowd going. Um, but yeah, so and then Ninja Mac got the win as well, as he should have. So, no, yeah, I enjoyed it whenever, whenever like two-thirds of the uh, people in the match were in there, whereas Leon was just kind of dragging it down as usual. So then we had, in the semi-main event, we had a special six-man tag match, Kizuna, Naomichi Marufuji, Masaki Mochizuki, and Akito defeat uh, Bibi Hulk, Hokuto Omori, and Yoshitomo uh, Shimo Higashi, who seems to be, I don't know, like I'm not really familiar with him. but Neither am I. But the thing is, he seemed to be, like, somewhat of a big deal because he actually came out with his own rap entourage. Like, he had, like, three people, like, rap him to the ring. Like, he's fucking, uh, uh, what were they called again? The two white guys in the nation. PG-13. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like, it's fucking, like, uh, Ron Simmons and PG-13. Um, but yeah, he had his own like rap entourage, like bring him out to the ring. Um, and like, he, like I looked him up on cage match and he really only has like two other matches in Tokyo Gurantai as well. So yeah, I don't know. Like there's definitely something again that I'm missing here. So some sort of cultural reference where it, like seems to be, he's some sort of big deal and maybe in the rap scene or something like that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I actually enjoyed this match as well. Hokuto Mori was probably one of the guys that was the most over in the match, which I didn't expect either. Like, he actually that's, got, like, pretty decent crowd calls. That's cool. Yeah. But definitely not a good sign for Noah. <laughs> no, no. The most over guy in there is the guy from your rival that has significantly less means than you. That's not the momentum that you want this to go into. Uh, oh yeah, I also should mention the finish as well. So the finish was a picture, a perfect figure for Laglock from Akito on uh, Shimo Higashi. Um, and it was actually a really nice looking figure for Laglock from Akito there. Um, otherwise, yeah, this was just a really nice kind of uh, six-man tag match. Everyone kind of tried hard and uh, yeah, uh, it was a good six-man tag match. I think it's really the best way to sum that up. And then in the main event, uh, Tokyo, Tokyo Gurantai versus Congo Vatos Locos. It's the Congo team of Keno, Katsuhiko Nakajima, Manabu Soya, Tadasuke, Hajime Ohara, and High69 defeat Nosawa Rangai, Masada, Fujita, Takemura, and Kikuzawa in 24 minutes 36 when Keno pinned uh, Nosawa after a PFS. Uh, this went... A bit long, as you might have guessed from the fact that it went nearly 25 minutes, uh, but it was pretty decent otherwise. Obviously, the Tokyo Gurantai team kind of uh, jumped the Congo team at the beginning, except for Masada, who I think missed his cue <laughs> because uh, he was still standing on the other side of the ring, and I think he was supposed to attack Keno. Uh, and I don't think Keno kind of took lightly to Masada fucking up his cue because he just went right over it, just kicked him really hard and just, like, just chucked him out of the ring. Oh, that rules. Yeah, that, that, was, that was just classical Keno just being, like, kind of grumpy. Uh, and then otherwise, yeah, we had some, like, brawling outside of the ring to start off. Uh, and then it kind of just went back into kind of just, yeah, I don't know, like, just two guys in the ring while everyone else just was fucking around outside. 
Um, there was some enjoyable stuff in there. Like, I think Keno was the highlight of the match. Like, I think he did the most enjoyable stuff. Like, he had, like, a really fun sequence with Fujita where he was trying to kick Fujita, but Fujita would just basically just preempt him with just a quick jab to the jaw uh, until he just finally, like, managed to just, like, beat the shit out of him. And then probably the best sequence of the match, though, was uh, Nakajima, I think, taking out some frustrations on Nosawa with his booking. Uh, when he did the whole sequence <laughs> where his opponent is sitting down and he kicks him in the chest and in the back. And he did that for like what felt like a solid like minute, basically. And he just kicked the shit out of Nosawa there. So that kind of felt like a bit like very like satisfying sequence. Um, but then otherwise, I feel like it, this match just went too long. It probably could have cut off like five minutes or maybe like 10 minutes off of it and would have been fine. Um, otherwise, yeah, I guess it makes sense to do it. Like this was a really good way for like Gurren Tide to go out. And if you're, if I'm Masada, I'm probably worried because this was like, if Nosawa is actually retiring, that basically means like half of Masada's uh, bookings kind of go out the window. Not half of them, pretty much all of them go out of the window. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think anyone is booking him. <laughs> like, he's just no. forced into retirement alongside Nosawa, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's an interesting show, or at least from the sounds of it, I have to say. But uh, I guess they, he made the, Nosawa made the best of what he could. Oh, I, I actually, sorry, no I, just, I just realized that actually the listing on Purolov actually omitted one of the people in the match. Oh, really? Yeah, Dick Togo was there too. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know why he's That's not listed funny. here, but he was in the match as well. <laughs> Did he do have anything of note, or is he still just doing his like House of Torture? Uh, stick? No, he was he was more doing like class. He wasn't really doing House of Torture stick. Uh, he wasn't really doing much, but wh- what he did was actually fun. He actually had a really fun sequence with, with Tadasuke where he like kind of just. Uh, did some really nice mad work with him where he basically like rolled him into a crucifix pin and then on the kick out immediately rolled him into a chokehold. So that was probably like the most I can remember of him doing in the match. And otherwise he was, he was not house of torture Dick Togo. He was just classical Dick Togo. Okay. Well, that's a nice thing to see because classical Dick Togo rules. (laughs) Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, I like I said uh, on the January first Budokan show, nothing new has been announced. I got to assume that's got to be out in the next day or two. Mm-hmm. You got the six man tag: Mas Katsufunaki, Katsuhiko Nakajima, and Manabu Soya versus X Kazuyuki Fujita and Kenokashin, Takashi Sugura and Satoshi Kojima versus Naomichi Marafuji and Kenta, Kaito Kiyomiya versus Keno, and then the Great Muda versus Shinsuke Nakamura. So that obviously is like the big draw. Um, it's actually, my actually understanding... just real quick because I don't think we're going to record again before the Budokan No, show. we're not. So I would actually ask if I can switch my lock. Okay. Because Go for uh, it. I want to switch it away from Rising Higher to beating Kasayashi. I want to switch it over to Kaito Kiyomiya beating Keno. Yep. I think that is a good choice. I think the way that that has gone, it's got to be Kaito because it would just be stupid if he loses it right away back to Keno. But again, um, w- when but- is the last time the uh, THC heavyweight title has actually been successfully defended? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, but again, it makes, over- the most, it makes the most sense for Kaito to win here, but I cannot I, I, rule it out that Keno is winning. But, I'm, but already- I am so confident that I'm locking up Kaito. And, and we already said, yeah, probably Minoru Suzuki as X. Mm-hmm. And who wins in Muda versus Nakamura? It is actually a genuinely difficult question because is WB willing to like have the guy take a loss? Like generally, they are very hesitant to let anyone do that. But I would, yeah. I would say that Nakamura would be willing to lay down for Muda. Absolutely. And this is not would. the final Muda match. Like, it's just a final Muda singles match. So, that way, I would say Muda is winning. Okay. I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming just Nakamura. Ex- because if it's the final Muda match, he can lose. If it's not the final Muda match, he, Muda can lose. So, 
Yeah. And from my understanding, I think I read somewhere that there, Noah's holding a press conference on the 30th, which might be it's going to be a cheering show because obviously mm -hmm. like now that New Japan says we're going to go full speed ahead with whatever ridiculous cheering rules uh, that apply that um, I would assume all the other companies are going to follow suit mm -hmm. unless the buildings are super strict. Yeah. No, I think I've, everyone has to follow the leader here. Uh, and I think or not everyone has to. But I think everyone will. Like, I think the moment yeah. New Japan does this, everyone else is just going to, like, basically drive behind them and basically let them, basically just follow them and do it as well because it doesn't make sense to just keep it going otherwise. Uh, also, just for quick, actually, another argument why Muda's winning and not Nakamura. It's the one time, like, uh, they sent over uh, when Kenta, or at that time still Hideo Itami, uh, yep. worked at Noah show. Uh, he actually lost to Marufuji. So there is precedence to WWE lent, letting their guys lose in Noah. Oh, for, for sure. Uh, although, I mean, Hideo Otomo was still in NXT. Well, I don't think he ever left NXT. No. But I mean, I have uh, no was, idea what Nakamura is doing right now in WWE. Like, so. Kent at that time was like the star of 205 Live. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> yeah, but I don't uh, know if they're pushing Nakamura in any way right now, so... I guess that I depends, don't believe so. so. Yeah. I don't believe so. Uh, so yeah, there's that. So it's very possible. I'm just going to lean lean towards Nakamura though. Uh, so that is our episode for this week. Thought we would just get one out real quick because otherwise we would have like a five hour episode. <laughs> because next time we're going to have to cover the All Japan shows, not just the like the ones on the 21st and Christmas, and then the second and the third. Plus, we got the Noah Budokan. There's also an N innovation show on the 23rd. So you know, um, there would have been just way too much, and we hadn't talked about Noah in a while. Yeah. And I have to say, I like, apart from the Dante and Leon, and apart from the Funaki and Inamura <laughs> constantly mm -hmm. losing. I mean, I. I'm digging what they, they're doing for the most part, more so than I was several months oh, ago. Oh, yeah, I, I'm definitely really looking to forward to the Budokan show. Uh, we will actually very likely going to have a written preview of that on the website as well, probably going up sometime <laughs> next week. Uh, well, I mean, it has to go up at, <laughs> at the very latest <laughs> next week because not going to write a preview of it afterwards. Uh, right. It is also very likely going to be a group preview as well, so I'm looking forward to that one as well. Okay, perfect. So for uh, Paul Vosch, I'm Gerard Trollo, and we'll see you in the new year.